today's uh, webinar is going to concern how we manage speech on full arch FP3 fixed cases, fixed hybrid cases. Uh, we get calls quite often about uh, patient speech uh, versus uh, tooth position or how to, how to correct it. The doctors sometimes don't know which approach to take to correct some of these speech issues that patients have once they get new uh, restorations. So uh, this presentation is based on the premise that the changes made to improve or correct speech discrepancies are executed chairside. And so why do I say that? Uh, over the years, we have, before we even got into uh, digital dentures or guided surgery or things of that nature, when we were still doing setups for try-ins in wax, we would go through cases, sometimes one try-in and we would go to finish. Other times, five or six try-ins before it was time to go to finish. And some of it had to do with correcting speech issues. So uh, my uh, philosophy is uh, that if the patient has speech issues, aesthetic issues, anything that uh, is in that realm, that those changes are easy, maybe not easily corrected chairside, but finally corrected at chairside, meaning that uh, you will see immediate results and solutions by trying to make these changes that we're gonna discuss right at the chair with the patient speaking and going through all these sounds that you need to, need to correct. Uh, and by doing that, you'll save multiple, I put excruciating appointments, and I'm sure some of you have been through these cases where it gets to be excruciating. Uh, you'll save time and money uh, by trying to correct these things right there when you have the patient with you. So uh, speech complications are, 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 are common when people get uh, new uh, teeth, especially when it has to do with anterior teeth. Um, you know, the, the size of the prosthetic, and we're talking about the hybrids now that we're making, the bulk of the prosthetic, uh, strains, phonetics, uh, and the doctors have to work hard to find the best compromise uh, for uh, this prosthetic to, to be in, in terms of size and tooth position so that the patient can speak properly and, and feel good about themselves when they speak because sometimes to us, when we hear people speak, it doesn't sound awful, but to them, they sound like they don't know how to talk. So, you know, they want to feel comfort, com confident and, uh, you know, sometimes their jobs require that they uh, speak well and have good diction. And uh, so we have to solve these problems for them, okay? Uh, so, uh, you know, all the clinical issues, uh, even sometimes emotional issues that people kind of feel when they're going through this process, should be, you should try to be solved before going to the final process, uh, the final appliance. And that doesn't mean they all have to be solved that day, but as they're wearing their provisional work on it, make these changes slowly but surely until you're happy, the patient's happy, they can speak well, look nice, and the bite is, is where you want it to be. So uh, basically this uh, all comes down to lips and tongues and tooth position. And both the lips and the tongues need room to move. Uh, otherwise they can't do the function that is required by our muscles to pronounce words properly. So uh, lips need uh, lips and teeth uh, tongues need room to move. You can see right at the top, the picture has all the different sounds that we make in the process of speaking that we don't realize or think about, uh, you know, in normal situations. But uh, in a case where we, the patient has had a lot of bone reduction, they have a prosthesis that the teeth might be in a little bit of a different place. The arch form is different. They get tongue tied. And sometimes, you know, they don't know, they're not confident. They all of a sudden hate the process they're going through and, and we have to solve it for them. Uh, they, they end up with stuttering or slurred speech and, um, and they're very confused by it. So uh, patients complain of slurring, hissing, lisping, spitting, problems with the sounds T, H, F, and S. S happens to be the one that most people have trouble with that I've encountered. Uh, but usually, probably in the vast majority of cases, people don't have too much of a problem with their speech. And after a little bit of time, uh, you know, they, they, they 
adjust to it, their speech comes back to them and they're okay. But in, in severe cases or uh, cases where patients, again, have, uh, you know, very uh, visible jobs, uh, any little deviation from uh, normal is something they, they won't tolerate. So one thing I've seen over the years, not only with, uh, with the guided surgery or uh, hybrid type cases where, that we're extracting all the teeth and giving people teeth the same day, is that during surgery, for the most part, pe people are in the supine position. And uh, just simple gravity, you know, the jaw can change positions. It tends to retrude as they're laying there. And, you know, the jaw has a hard time finding its way back to their normal centric when it comes time to check the bite. And, uh, you know, especially as they become lucid, you know, without us trying to position that for them or the doctor trying to position their bite for them, as they wake up, they, there's, there's something new in their mouth that doesn't feel good to their tongue. They try to bite, the back teeth hit a lot of times, uh, or you're, they're in a crossbite, uh, and uh, something's not right. So uh, I have found that during the bite check process, it's good to have the patient sitting up where the jaw can relax into the normal position that it should be in, uh, or that they function with uh, during their life and try to correct, you know, get the bite into the correct position in that uh, uh, sitting position. Uh, so the complications that can arise that can cause problems are arch width changes, uh, causing retricted uh, tongue space, and a lot of it can be due to the bulk of the provisional, but the bulk of the provisional has everything to do with where the teeth are placed. So once we put these in the patient's mouth, you know, the day of surgery, they can't talk well and, and, and you know, they're swollen. Uh, they've just had a, a lot of surgery done and they're beat up and tired. So uh, most uh, doctors will say, uh, you know, well, if you have speech issues after a couple of weeks, then let it last, you know, use it that long. And we'll start attacking these problems because sometimes within those two weeks, everything works itself out. So uh, if it doesn't though, uh, where can we make adjustments? And that's what this uh, uh, webinar is about. How do we adjust these and how can we correct these speech problems? Uh, and quite often, uh, if, if some of these problems are, are addressed at the day of surgery with the patient laying down, uh, I, I've seen cases where the vertical dimension has been changed uh, and the bite class has been changed. And sometimes because one, maybe the bite wasn't correct in the first place when we made the case. And two, because of the position the patient was in and in his surgery day and they're, you know, they've been anesthetized and, and, they're, and their joint has uh, been beat up during the surgery. So uh, they, some people have a hard time finding their bite right away. So where can adjustments be made? And all of these problems that we're going to talk about today uh, have a way to attack. Have, there is a way that we can solve these for the most part. Is it always going to be perfect? Not always, and there's reasons for that. But can we get close? I think we can. And can we solve most of them? I think we can. So there are different sound groups, and there's five. Uh, tongue to the hard palate, which is the DNT sound. Tongue to the teeth, which is the L and the TH sound. Teeth to teeth, which is the S, S, H, and the Z sound. Uh, teeth to lips, which is the F and V, and lip to lip, which is B, M, P sounds. So once we group this into this, uh, into this series of uh, sounds, uh, it's easier to try start to isolate what we need to work on. And then we can focus on the changes that we need to make. 